horrified that a conservative leader has now been found to be flouting the Constitution by the Supreme Court. And he should, as a conservative, be showing respect for those courts. Should he resign? I think in his position I would resign. And obviously, I believe strongly that what he's done is wrong. He said that he was taking us out of the European Union to bring power back to the British courts and the British Parliament. Mm. And as soon as the British courts and British Parliament do something that he doesn't like, he tries to turn against them. Well, he has, well, he has said he respects the decision. He doesn't agree with it, which is fair enough, isn't it? You can disagree with something but respect the result, right? Does, That's been does that sound Brexit. like you're I, I, respecting my, my... the decision if you then go on to say that you disagree with it and you think they're wrong? Two things. He should never in the first place have tried to muzzle Parliament if he believes in the sovereignty of Parliament. This whole strategy was unconstitutional, unlawful from the beginning. But the Attorney-General appears to have given him advice. According to Sky News yesterday, one of their top correspondents reported the Attorney-General had actually said to him, this is lawful. Now, if that's the case, and you're a sitting Prime Minister, and you're Attorney... It's not been... You know, I've not seen it. It's confirmed. But if that is true, and you've taken legal advice from your top lawyer, and he says it's lawful, has what Boris done... Is that... Is that still scandalous and resignation-worthy? So I think any of us who takes advice from a lawyer needs to look at the principle at stake. And what he was proposing to do was suspend and muzzle Parliament to stop it debating the biggest, biggest issue of the day, which was Brexit. But he, knew so that, he, he knows he, that Parliament is trying to stop Brexit happening. Does he or does he not believe in Parliament? The only reason... Does, he is, well, let me he throw is, it back at you, Rory. Yeah. Does or does not Parliament believe that its number one duty is to actually fulfil the will of the democratic vote of the people of this country in the referendum, because three-quarters of Parliament voted Remain, and everything they have done so far suggests to me, as a Remainer, so I'm not complaining, sure. except if I'm a Leaver, sure. I feel outraged. Except you're the talking... Parliament, you're the talking Parliament to... has basically conspired to stop any form of Brexit going through. You're we know talking that. to an MP who voted for the withdrawal agreement. Exactly. So what I'd say, Piers, is that he has been pushing. The only reason we haven't left is because of Boris and the ERG. We could have left on the 31st of March. We voted repeatedly for a Brexit deal. They had a dangerous, unconstitutional fantasy of driving through a no-deal Brexit. And they've had this fantasy for nine months. We've told them again and again that they can't do it because it would break the Constitution. The Supreme Court confirmed that yesterday. Drop this fantasy with a no-deal Brexit and compromise. But everybody, and everybody agreed that Theresa May's deal was bad. Right? A lot of people held their nose and signed up to it. But most people... Well, Remainers didn't. Remainers thought this was the best possible Brexit. That raised alarm bells with the Brexiteers. He went, well, if the Remainers all love it so much, it's clearly as bad as we think. So, Piers, to return to it, it took us out of the European Union. Mm -hmm. It took back control... It didn't, though, really, did it? It, well, it, it put us in the same relationship with the European Union that Turkey has. Turkey is not in the European Union. Full control over immigration, no money paid, economic access to European markets, it would have been a very good deal for The Britain. trouble is it kept and us the... in the customs union if we couldn't come up with a trade deal that dealt with the exactly, Northern Ireland border. Exactly. And that so the obviously is, the was issue the is around point. the trade and customs union. But, of course, customs union is good for British car manufacturers, good for our... The customs union is what we were told we would be leaving yeah. if we voted to leave, and that's a crucial point here. People have tried to rewrite history. We were on air throughout the referendum process, and it was quite clear that if you left the European Union, it would mean leaving the single market and customs union. So I understand why the Brexit is, said, no, this is not what we understand okay. Brexit to but, be. But, you can't be in a customs union with the EU and say legitimately that is leave. So, so the courts put it very well. The courts said it's not for the court to decide whether or not we do Brexit. The British people voted for Brexit. But it is Parliament's job to determine the type of Brexit. And there was never a majority in Parliament for a no-deal Brexit. And if the ERG and Boris had been prepared to compromise one inch... We could have left. But why the should they have compromised the over, say, customs union? Because what it's so fundamentally alien to what they understand Brexit to be. Because what they were pushing for, which is a no deal Brexit, was unconstitutional, impossible, and damaging. How do you Brexit. negotiate, Rory? How do you negotiate with the EU in any meaningful way to get what you really want if you take no deal off the table and don't use it as a bargaining tool? That's why I don't understand with all the people who say no to no deal. You've got to at least look like you may walk away. Because we got the deal. They are now trying to do something impossible. So it's not like uh, buying a car. It's like a divorce. This no-deal threat is a threat to us and to them. Of course it made the European Union move. We got a better deal than we thought. But now we've got the 450-page deal. 
we should take it through. All this talk about no deal is impossible. Parliament won't consent to it. Be deeply damaging to us. It's a daft idea. Parliament Let's won't consent collectively as a body. Parliament won't consent to anything on Brexit. But Parliament we... is completely paralysed on Brexit. Mm. So three and a half years later, here we are with paralysis in our main body trying to put this through. The only... Everyone's sick of Parliament. I couldn't agree more. Obfuscating. I couldn't it. agree more. And I'm sick to the teeth of this. And the only reason we didn't leave on the 31st of March is because Boris, Jacob Rees-Mogg, the ERG and all that okay. didn't vote for a Brexit the, deal. We could have been out the by The 31st now. of October, uh, we are going to leave do or die. However, there is a piece of legislation in place which says if we don't have a deal, then he has to go and ask for a, an extension. And he said he would rather die in a ditch. There's a lot of dying, threats of dying going yeah. on here. So this is what the... is going to happen? Because Boris cannot stay in position and ask for an extension. Can he? So, so the fundamental problem of his strategy from the beginning is it's all been based on this idea that he could drive a no-deal Brexit through by the 31st of October. When I was running the leadership against him, the question I asked in the BBC debates was, how are you going to get a no-deal Brexit through against the consent of Parliament? He wouldn't have an answer. Nobody would answer this question. Is the it whole, possible? Whole, no. The reason we have a Parliament is to force compromise. We have to compromise. There's a 52-48 vote. We need a practical, moderate Brexit deal. Mm. Trying to take winner takes all, which is what he's the doing. The trouble is, though, we work. don't do that with an election. No. We don't, we don't actually no. say if you only win by 1%, you then have to take half of the policies from the opposition Couldn't, manifesto. Couldn't agree more. So why, why, actually, having voted to leave, should there be any compromise with be the people who lost? Because, I don't get it. Because you, you lost. I lost. Sure. My vote sure. lost. Sure. And in a general election, sure. you win or you lose. The same principle to me should apply to a referendum. The difference here is this isn't for five years. This is for 40 or 50 years. The whole country... But the, gonna, but the principle's the, whole, the same, Rory. No, no it, because it in a general it, election country, you get a chance in five years to, to vote for someone else. The whole country has to live else. with this. This is the structure of the next 50 years of our relationship. No, she, no it's not. No, it's so, not. So because we, it, no, no, because subsequent governments can always have another referendum. But what you've got to do, in my eyes, you, I think democracy depends on whether we actually enact leaving. But, because if we don't, we have refused but, to accept but, the result of the referendum. I, we must leave, but we leave in a moderate, pragmatic deal. To put it another way, the majority of people did not vote for a no-deal Brexit. There's no democratic mandate for a no-deal Brexit. But that's because three-quarters of Parliament voted Remain. No, no, e even amongst the population. It's about a third, a third, a third. Mm. Third right. remains, I wanna, third for before we let you go, third for a compromise. Before we let you yeah. go, I to, just want to mm. ask you one other thing. Mm. The Labour Party wants to get rid of private schools. And I heard last night uh, Shami Chakrabarti, one of their leading lights, talking about, well, the, the overprivileged Tories. What struck me about this was she's one of the people who's agreed with the uh, Labour Party membership that we should get rid of private schools, right? She sends her son to a, to a top public school, Dulwich. She tried to send her son to Eton, where Which you went. Where you went. And yet she wants to get rid of Eaton. And you've got Diane Abbott, who said she'll also support getting rid of private schools, but sent her kid to a private school and so on. What do you make of this hypocrisy on the left about the kind of school that you went to? Well, I, th I think it's mad. I think we have some amazing schools in this country, people from all over the world come. It's great for our economy. It produces amazing things, and I think we should be proud of it. We should balance it with a really, really good government education system. That's why, actually, I do support Boris putting a lot more money into state education. It's yeah. the right thing to do. But I think abolishing private schools, like abolishing private businesses, doesn't create excellence. Well, it's the politics excellence. of envy, and when it's laced with hypocrisy, I find it even more stomach churning. And I went to private and state schools, and I enjoyed both. I was lucky to be at two good versions of both types of education. But You've only... got to make the state schools uh, better. That's this... what we've got to do. Yeah, and there is an argument that if only 7% of our children go to private school, then, but such a huge proportion of those at the top in power went to private school and in other institutions, the media, for mm. instance, um, as well, that it entrenches privilege. Sure. And, you know, people find that that's unfair. 95%, that's not an unreasonable 95%, accusation to make. 95% of British footballers, the top ones, earning multi-million pound contracts, went to state schools. Should anyone who went to a private school feel outraged and... and and in sense of burning injustice, that only the state school kids get to be well, multi-millionaire footballers. The majority. No, my so point the, being the is the that largest proportion once you play of the, most things once will, you play the envy, hard ticket, woe is me thing about this, right? You can look at all sorts of sectors yeah. and say sport, high-level football in this country is dominated by state school Except, kids. Except weirdly, Michael Gove, your colleague, 
former colleague, yeah. um, also argued for this at one point. So I, I think what the core of this is we need to improve our schools yes. in this country. There isn't enough money into That's education. Teachers are under huge stress. And actually, we're not performing well enough still on literacy, numeracy, and other things. Yeah. Arts, culture, design. So we need to improve our schools. Rory, we end on a that, point of total not to get rid of the unanimity and agreement. Thank you very much. That's good. Nice good to, to see you. you Thanks. GQ uh, Politician of the Year. Yeah, well, he, you had the old Stewart. GQ curse, because I was made GQ's Editor of the Year and later GQ's TV Personality of the Year. <laughs> In both cases... Yeah. I lost my job that I got it for within several months. And that was Rory, a big welcome, welcome to the GQ Men of the Year curse. Thank you managed you. to lose yours before you even got up on the podium. Thank uh, good to see you. Bye-bye, guys. Uh, oh, he's gone. He's off. He's off. He's off. No, no yeah. waiting for it's Rory. All right. You've got Parliament. The busy to get morning. Got nothing, Rory. You're we good. Do you're not good. want to hold you back. Cheers. You're good, mate. Busy bye, boy. Bye, bye. <laughs>